Hello again, thanks very much for joining me for this week's river pattern. I say river pattern in the loosest of terms because I'd be perfectly happy fishing this in a small still water and I think it would catch fish no problem at all. So I'm going to tie a zonker variation and what I have in the vise is a Hanak H900 streamer hook and it's at size 8. The thread I'm going to be using today is the UTC thread, it's the 140 denier and it's in black. First thing I'm going to do is just unravel some of my thread and get plenty of wax on. Start about a couple of millimetres back from the eye of the hook. Then I can use my rat's tail to help guide down my bed of thread. I'm going to bring it back to approximately where a barb would be if it was a barbed hook and take away my waste. Next thing then, I'm going to bring my thread all the way back to about just over an eighth of an inch from the eye of the hook. And I'm going to put some weight on the front of this zonker. And what I'm going to be using is these Dazzle Dumbbells. This one's the Black Nickel, 3.2 millimeters. And I've already taken one out of the packet here. And I find the best way when I put these on is to lay them on across the shank. Sorry, in line with the shank. Just getting a bit more wax on my thread there. And once you've got one turn on, it should bend in and, and play with you a bit better. So I've got that on now, and I'm going to just, I don't know if you can see how well you can see that with my thumb in the way, but I'm just getting a few figure of eight turns in. And again, I've put on plenty of wax to hold that into place. And I'm going to bring my thread all the way at the back of the hook out my way. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I've found with these dumbbell ones, they, they sort of, they roll out and they don't lend themselves to putting eyes on the eyes that you buy, which are generally flat and the sticky on type. So what I've done to alleviate that problem is use resin. And so the first resin I'm going to need is the white. So this is laser fly fishing UV resin, fast white it's called. So it's a very runny resin. So I'll just give it a good shake up and I'm going to turn my vise on the side. Now this may pop out of focus slightly. I hope not because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing here. Uh, and I'm going to take my dubbing needle and try and get a, do a droplet off the resin onto my needle. That should do it. And then I can work that across the dumbbell eye. Just need a little bit more than that. So I'll try and bring it into focus. There's some just gone on the edge there. And then I can add that. And that's perfect for what I need. I'm just going to cure that off. And just bear with me during this stage. Uh, it does take a little bit of time. I'm going to turn it round the other way now and do the other side of the eye. Again, a little bit of resin onto the, the dumbbell. And if you've got to go back a couple of times, it, do, it doesn't matter. Just as long as you've got the bulk of that eye covered. There we go. And I'll just come in with my pen and cure that off. So, as you can see now, I've got uh, two white 
white parts on my, my fly. And the next thing to do is come in with some of the black resin. This one's from Troutline. It's a pure black resin. So it's quite thick and it's much easier to work with than the, uh, than the white. So I've just got that. Taking that out, I'm going to take a little dot and simply dab it on like so. And then there's probably enough on this um, needle already to put on another dot. Then I can put that to the side and once more come in with the resin and cure that off. Do the same with the other side. Now, um, what I tend to do with these is then come over the top with some super glue and just to lock that into place. Make sure I cover the eyes. Then, in the normal scheme of things, I would uh, have cast off my thread before I did any of this. And then I took it out of the vise, put it to the side to dry, and started with the next one. But in this case, I'm going to use the magic of video to cut to the next scene where I've got the dry one in the vise. Right, now the super glue's all dry, I can come in with some silver wire for ribbing. And what I'm going to do is again bring my thread all the way at the top, catch it in just behind the dumbbell eyes and bring my thread to the butt end of my fly. Okay, next, the body material. So what I've got is I'm going to be using some of this stuff. It's uh, from Get Slotted Tungsten Beads and it just says fly tie material, which is not particularly help helpful if um, you're trying to identify the dubbing. But basically it's a cream dubbing and I've also taken some um, of the hens dubbing, number six, and I've simply mixed them together. So just with my fingers, like so, and mix the dubbing together. Now, if I, if I show you that there, I don't know how well you'll see it, but um, it's a lot of glister and stuff going through, which gives it a real lifelike appearance on the body. So. I'll take that now and I want to try and get a nice taper in the body take my time and just add dubbing as I'm going along just to get that nice cigar shape. And I can come all the way back up and then bring it, bringing the thread under the dumbbell eyes to the front of the hook. Okay, before I go on, I'm just gonna come in with my dubbing brush and loosen up some of these fibers uh, and this will help me later on when I come to stretch out the body a little bit. So next then we're looking at bringing our wing in. So I'm going to use uh, some pre-cut zonker strips. This is from Hens and this is the number 32 muskrat and they tell me it's 2.5 millimeters wide. So I've taken a bit out of the packet uh, as you can see, it's a nice brown colour, I really like it. And uh, I like the way the fibres go really thin and dark at the ends there. 
it open, really opens up in the water. So first thing to do then is remove maybe an eighth of an inch of the fur at the front, like so. So that's the bit I want to catch in. I'm going to get plenty of wax onto my thread. And then I can catch that in. I just want to make sure it sits straight. So I'm going to take my time until I get the turn I want. There we go. And then I can just gently ease that back from the eye. And then I'm able to catch that in. Now before I do anything else, I'm just going to put a half hitch in to just stop it slipping over the front of the the front of the hook. What I don't want is my thread slipping over my eye and then I've lost my purchase on my, my zonker strip. So I'm going to bring it back now. I'm going to lick my thumb and forefinger to just dampen it down a bit. It just helps a bit with this. It can be quite unruly, this material. So what I'm looking for is the beginning of my wire rib. So I can just see that on my side. And I'm just opening up the fur to find the gap. And I reckon it's about there. And I'm going to put in two turns of my wire right at the butt section. Just to give it a bit of security. Next, we're going to, in about eighth of an inch gaps, I'm going to find the gap and bring it up like a normal rib. So each time, keeping tension on the wire, pulling some of the wing back and just forming a, a rib like you normally would only. You need about five sets of hands when you're doing this. So just pulling it back, making the gap and bringing the wire down. Now, if um, you've done this right, you get a nice uh, even wire rib. If you've done it wrong, you get quite a, a rough looking wire rib. And, and to be honest, with this fly, nobody's going to lose any sleep over it. So last one now, just a few strands. I'm going to bring that over right behind my dumbbell eye. I'm just constantly moving fibers out the way. And the next one, is going to come in under the eye. I'm going to catch that with my thread. Put a couple of turns in there. Keeping the thread under tension, I can then take away my wire rib. Okay, so this would be an incredibly long zonker if I left the tail at this length. So I'm going to come in with my snips and I'm going to allow about three-eighths of an inch on this one and cut away. Now, if I use my fingers, wet my thumb and forefinger, slick it all back, like so, you can see the overall length of the fly. Well, I hope you can. The camera might have cut off a bit, but it's probably around six centimeters okay so that's looking pretty good next thing i want to do is come in with my dubbing brush and just ease up some of these fibers here and on the other side and because i did this um, before i put the rib on the fibers should come out a bit more easy for you and what that does is it will bring out some of the sparkly uh, material that I blended it in with the the, um, the hens dubbing that I mixed in with my my cream dubbing. So I've got that now. I'm going to invert my vise because the the next thing, last but not least, I'm going to put a throat 
tackle into this. And what I'm going to use for that is a bit of bucktail. Uh, nice bright orange one. You don't need much of this material. So I'll grab a little pinch off camera. And even this seems, uh, you know, I thought I was being conservative when I snipped off a bit there. But even this seems rather uh, a lot for the fly I'm tying here. So I'm just going to pull out any of the particularly long fibres. Pull that out of my way. And I'm going to lay that on. And what I do with this generally is dress it up so that the tips are not far off the, the inside bend of the hook. Then I come in and get a couple of turns to hold that into place. Now, this can be quite tricky, this bit. Uh, what you don't want to do is cut your thread. So try and make sure the thread's right out the way as much as possible. And then come in and as, as close as you can... And you might not be able to see what I'm doing here. Take away your spare or waste bucktail. Now, as you can see, I've still got quite a bit here that is, um, is protruding. And it's protruding over the eye and I don't want that. So, although I've got two or three turns in and it's waxed thread, I should still be able to... Just about, sorry, this tiny fly's just fell for somewhere and uh, I have no idea where. Anyway, as I was saying, grab your bucktail with your thumb and forefinger and just gently ease it back slightly. Once I'm clear of the eye, I've got no problems. And I can just about see that if I put a couple of tons in here, I've captured that. Okay, I'm happy that um, that's sitting properly now. So I'm going to bring my vise back round and lock it off. Okay, we're nearly there. So to finish off, I'm going to use a bit of resin on my thread it seems to have opened up a bit on me here so I'm just going to spin that up a bit and catch in a few turns and again if you're super skilled you'll get out your whip finish tool if you're not super skilled you'll get out your half hitch and stick a couple in. Come with a UV pen just to cure that off. Now for government work I would normally um, call it a day with that. Stick the fly to the side and I've got my finished article. Um, but because I'm doing it for you I'm going to just put an extra bit of resin on the head just to give it that nice shiny fizzing finished. Let's try that again just to give it that nice shiny finished article look. So just invert the vice round, make sure I get good coverage all the way around. And I'm just going to a little bit at the top there. Jobs are good in. So I can bring the vise back to its natural position. Cure off the UV resin. And there you have a little mini zonker, which um, I intended it for the river, um, for the big rivers in Slovenia, or even the D for that matter. But um, 
I'd be quite happy going to still water with this fly and be fairly content that it will take rainbow, stocky rainbows all day. So there you go. Um, I primarily did this pattern to show you how to do the eyes because it's a great wee tip. If you're trying to add eyes to a pattern, just having the two coloured resins can make uh, all the difference and, and buying the manufactured eyes is quite expensive. So that's the tip to take away for this video this week. If you're enjoying what I'm doing, please don't forget to subscribe and I hope to see you next time. So that's your first method. If you want to make them up, that's how to do it.